It was strange to see Paul go and DJ to come in, but he was a great teammate, a great player for those two or three years. But the most talked about off-season deal was a swap of all-star guards. The Suns sending high-scoring Paul Westfall to Seattle for defensive standout Dennis Johnson, the Sonics' most valuable player in the World Championship Series just two seasons back. There were some things that I focused on that made me think maybe it'd be better if I played somewhere else. I think with a little bit more maturity and hindsight, I wouldn't have done that, but I did that and Jerry was able to uh, get a Hall of Fame player in return and uh, it was a good deal for the Suns. Dennis Johnson, yeah, DJ. DJ didn't work hard in practice, okay? He was not a practice guy. He was the first Iverson, maybe, <laughs> practice. I mean, it, listen, we talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. He didn't like to practice. He would say on the plane or on the bus, I can't wait to practice. I can't wait to practice. And everybody knew he didn't want to be there. And he got sent home a few times from practice. That was kind of rare. You know, with a John McLeod coach team, you, you did what the coaches wanted and you played hard in practice because the wisdom was you only played in a game as hard as you practiced at practice the day before. Boy, he was one of the guys that was clutch. Couldn't shoot very well, but could hit big shots in the fourth quarter. Dennis was uh, really an unselfish player, and he really wanted to make sure that the team thrived. He didn't care about his statistics. He could have averaged over 20 points a game every single night if he wanted to, but he wanted to ensure the team's success, and so he really took a step back offensively to let other players uh, thrive, which was really in the best interest of the team. But when the playoffs came around, <laughs> He would certainly rise to the occasion. He's one of the best playoff uh, players in the history of the NBA. Just a solid player. Didn't do anything spectacular, but run the show. Play defense. And you need him to lock somebody down, he locked him down. Come game time, uh, he played hard and uh, was a good teammate. Uh, great on the defensive end. Made it easier for me because he always took the, the toughest scoring guard. DJ made great defensive plays when we had to have them. So if we coming down and we need a big steal, he's going to make that steal. We had a few good defensive guards here over the years, you know, Johnny High and DJ, and DJ was the best. Great rebounder, and I remember once someone shoved me, some big guy, and DJ was over in that guy's face in a second, and I'm going, you know, you like teammates that stick up for you, he was right there. The addition of DJ gives the Suns a big plus in the rebounding column, as well as another NBA all-defensive team standout. Well, again, he's another unheralded player, although he's in the Hall of Fame, but DJ just created so many matchup problems. Uh, you know, he could rebound, uh, he could back you down and post up, he could, you know, he would distribute the ball. He was, he was just a superb talent. But the one thing I do remember DJ told me, he said, if I ever throw you alley oop, you make sure you jump. Don't ever make me look bad. And it, he could throw it anywhere, and I would jump because, man, if I didn't, I would know I was going to get ringed by DJ. But it, great, great guy. I remember one game, uh, he had big free throws to seal the victory for us. And, of course, the people in the end zone uh, there were doing everything to distract him. And one guy had a, a picture of a, a lady that was a little overweight in a bikini and when DJ went to shoot the ball he had that picture up but Dennis Johnson I, he made him he came over to the bench and I said did you see that picture and he goes what picture he never even saw it so he had good focus because they were big free throws and we won down there in Houston <laughs> 